shit. There you we, go. we ain't even talking about the shit amongst each other. That's that's actually. He's bringing it out of us. It's like, uh, man, you know what it is. It's your homeboy Ice Cube, West Coast Warlord. Yo, man, it's Too Short Man uh, album, Mount Westmore, in store December 9th. Get the album. Hey, what's going on? It's E40, man. Y'all log in to us, man. Mount Westmore, straight back to back slaps. Hello. Watch. Today we have three of the most legendary artists of all time. When it comes to influence, this room has damn near impacted every aspect of culture for multiple decades. From movies to music to vernacular, we have three once in a lifetime talents that have joined forces together to become three fourths of the super group Mount Westmore. I don't think any further introduction is needed. We have E42 Short and Ice Cube in the building. Welcome. How are you guys hey. all feeling today? Hey, hey, right on, right on. Never read your intro speech, bro. Nah, nah, nah. It was cool. <laughs> he did good, bro. Just, just speak what you really know and say it. Nah, nah, nah. Say we want him to get everything. You did good, bro. <laughs> like, like, I, I want, I want to get all the love I'm supposed to get. He wrote that shit last night. I want to hear it all. Iconic groundbreaking Only artist from. Don't, don't be coming off the dome with us. <laughs> from the we early no days of hip hop intro. until present day. Once they in have a lifetime artists though. I like that part. Hello. He said once in a lifetime. That's what I'm saying, orders. man. Yeah. You know, Let that man read what he need to read, read off man. the page, man. Yeah. 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 You understand right, well, me? Well, speaking of reading off papers, do you guys at this point in your career, you're in the booth, are you reading off of paper or are you going off the top of the dome? Sometimes I read off notes. Like I take notes and I just, oh, let me go to my notes. And then I just punch me in. Like I just like, when I say notes, like a couple little phrases or something, then I say punch me in. I just like punch me in, punch me in. I don't, I don't write it out like I used to. Like back in the days, we used to use hella paper and just, you know what I'm saying? Now it's just like, punch me in. You get the best out of it, I feel. You know what I mean? I'm a songwriter, man. I I, I literally have to, just for the sport of it, mm. I can't really, I never knew how to freestyle back in the day. Like, just call top of the head free. I, I never, could, never could fucking freestyle. So even in the booth, the idea of like letting it flow freely. I watch Earl work. I watch him do songs over the years. Just the idea of doing it that way to me is like, <clears throat> I kind of want to go in the booth already knowing where I'm going. I don't want to. I don't want to find my way while I'm in the booth. I, me personally, yeah. I have a way of writing songs that I need to say this and I need to say that. So I can't really start here and end up there in in real time. I got to y'all just punch me in. Yeah, that's cool. And <laughs> they, they, they <clears throat> it's it's a vibe though. I probably could do the vibe. I just don't want to because I'm like I got this part down. Mathematics is my thing. I'm like it it, it adds up right. So I'm just gonna do it. So you, you, you write and, and you go off the paper and you're going to judge my... I don't life. use paper, man. I got a fucking... I got an old shitty iPad I keep in the studio. It's got a million rhymes in it. I'm like, at least and we... Concepts. I'm and going, concepts. I'm going digital. Yeah, I got a lot of titles and phrases and all the other shit. Some songs I go in there with like a half a verse written, but I I, I type it in the iPad. So it um, it's on the cloud, so it pops up on my phone too. So, you know, I can watch my rhymes go with me. Okay. I'm it works. Writer. I could do paper, I could do whatever, you know. Yeah, rap from your but phone like this? I can do all that shit. I've done too. that before, do uh, but I like to know my rhyme by the time we record it. I want to know it. I might have that up there, but I don't want to rely on it. I want to kind of, you know, I think you, when you know your flow, you can you can experiment. You can, you can, when you know your rhyme, put it that way, you can experiment with the flow a lot more. So... You know, but I'm a, I'm a writer, you know. Let me tell you what I everything. do. This is what I do. I'll do a verse and then I'll do another verse. For that same for that same first verse, I'll do a whole nother one. Then I might do another one, right? Different bars or it, same bars? Different same, bars. The first verse three times. Three times. And then I take some, then sometimes I take the best bars out of all three verses and put that thing in there and it becomes a classic. Hello. Wow. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's that's like that's uh, how you make sure. Yeah, 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 that's how you know. <laughs> you, know you got this one take technique. I like. Bars. You did this one technique. I like. You was doing the. Um, it was like eight bars. You just put on the beat and just throw eight bars on it and walk away. Yep. And then pop it back up like weeks later or something and just see what them eight bars did. And be like, okay, I'm gonna go with that. That's how I did choices. It took me like two, two, three months to do that. To, I just kept pecking at it because I wanted every bar to be a bar. I wake up you at five I mean? in the morning and just listen to that beat. Smoke one. Just listen to that beat, and then it just start happening. Nobody in the world is moving. The phone ain't yeah. ringing. I just start. I put it down. Best bro. time to write. I might go back and readjust it in the studio, but I'm coming in with like pages, just like. You to wake me up. I'll be asleep, <laughs> and I'll be like, 
I, got, I, got, I got that fucking beat downstairs. I just get up out of bed, get dressed. My wife, where are you going? You know where I'm going. <laughs> going downstairs. I like writing two, three in the morning, yeah. four in the morning. When, it, when ain't nobody calling no, you. Yeah, nobody I like, fucking I like to write my rhymes. Like Keek to Steak say, I like to write my rhymes in the bathroom. <laughs> so, so they know I'm the shit. So you know I'm the shit. So you know what I'm saying? Because that's where, you know, wife will be asleep. I might be taking an early morning gangster sit down, right? Yeah. And that's when you'll ride because you just chilling. You just, you comfortable. Oh man, I've never wrote many slaps, 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 slaps. Dang near every, uh, all of them. <laughs> hey, it is what it is, man. You know, I, I'm only human, like Human League. Say, I'm only human. You feel me? Hello. I, I ride a lot of airplanes. Mm. Flight, mm -hmm. Flights, just mm -hmm. ideas, you know, like just shit, just put it down. Mm -hmm. Shit just come to you when ain't no, shit come to me when ain't nobody fucking with me. Like if you ain't talking to me and I'm not. I can have a conversation with somebody and still think of a rhyme in the back of my head, like <laughs> I'm gonna write that shit down. As soon as I finish talking to your ass. Does it like inspire, like combos with people, does that inspire bars usually? But let's just, let's talk about my Not really. My Westmore? Yeah. It's probably the easiest shit. Ever, ever. Really? ever. I got to write one verse it's for every the, fucking song. It's, it's either fun. Ever did. It's fun being part of a group. As like, a solo artist? This is my third writing. group. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you had, like, CIA. In the, in, well, oh, where are you in Canada? That would be four. <laughs> I don't count them. Okay, them okay, locals. Okay. Them, we, didn't, we didn't even make hit records. But NWA. NWA. Uh, West Side, West Side Connection, Connection. Mount Westmore. It's just fun when, you know, when you know that the song is going to be dope because... You got like capable MCs. Like with this, you know, you, you have legendary MCs that got their own, you know, whole, you know, history and, and everybody with more than 30 years in the game. Um, so you know it's gonna be fire. What's dope about the Mount Westmore record is as you listen to it, you're just looking forward to hearing like what everybody's going to say about this topic or about that topic and everybody give you what you what you want and um and you know it's satisfying it's a very satisfying record it was i was listening on the way here and that's like that's how i was feeling like oh i wonder what cube is going to say about this like i was waiting for everybody's verses and yeah we're not trying to be each other oh, yeah. we're not trying to be each other it doesn't even matter where he going with it cuz i'm going to do my own Space on that song and that subject, it works. Okay, so what what's what was the biggest difference for you working on a project like this? One verse. <laughs> One fucking verse, the song is done. What? What? I'm like, and you know, the competition of it, the fact that I don't care how fucking good you feel that day, Ice Cube, E40, and Snoop still gonna rap on that song. Like, I don't care how good I, I, they they're coming. And you got, you only got, I mean, it's not a lot of space to fucking like fuck up. Cause these motherfuckers don't fuck up. You hear their verses ever and rewrite or go back in? I mean, the most we do is adjust a word here and there, a phrase here and there. When you like listen to the, the, the full of it and you know. We all kept our verses the same. Every verse that we did. Yeah. You yeah. A, a, a thing here and there to, to make the song better. But man, I'm just saying when I come out the gate on these shits, like if you go first, you don't know what the fucking rest of them gonna do. So you really just gotta you gotta be brave to go first. Yeah. You gotta be brave That'd and be like me. That'd be I know me. what I'm doing. <laughs> That'd be me. I always go first. Yeah, yeah. You're and they let me though. They let me. They let me I, I pretty much it was dope. first on the bunch of Cody them. would come with you, the you, verse, the ad lib, and the hook. <laughs> like, okay. And shit. you got a way of knowing how to start. Song's almost finished. <laughs> you got you gotta begin. You're an intro kind of motherfucker. Like you do something to a song mm -hmm. that make you you know, Make you get into it. Exactly. You know, so, I always say acrobats. Come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fody be doing acrobats. It's, um, the beat. it's a good balance. Y'all follow up right. You can, always, you can always count on Snoop. The songs will go down and be like two of us had already did their verse and two haven't. You like, where this shit gonna go? And then when the third one drop in, you like, okay, okay. And then you like one one motherfucker left. And like, what's this motherfucker gonna do? If you wait last, you, it's kind of the cheat code too. <laughs> it's kind of the cheat code. Wait last, you like hear everybody else did, and then you just like yeah. one up one up us. It was that was it was all techniques. It all worked out. It, it happened in every kind of way too. So everybody did a song where they started it off and influenced the hook. Everybody did a song where they finished it off and, and got a chance to like 
speak on it in a way nobody else spoke on it. You know, it's, it's cool. I've always been curious. So when was the first time you guys all heard each other's music? Like, where were you in life? Where were you in your careers? What was the first song you heard? I can tell you where I first heard this man. Uh, my, my cousin came down from the town, from the town of Oakland, Cavio and Young Eye, right? Talking about, uh, I, hey, Earl, uh, <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't up on my partner too short. <laughs> <laughs> I was 14. <laughs> I was 14. I said, man, let me hear him, you know, and I'm just getting, I'm just starting to get into my mannishness. Like, you know, I'm a teenager, but I'm starting to be a little hard headed now because I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm on Magazine Street and I'm seeing all kind of activities and I'm listening to what he's saying and you understand me? And so I, I became an instant fan, you understand me? Him and Freddie B. And then I heard Cube like in 19, like 87. We was out in LA and we was at the swap meet. We was at the swap meet, Slauson swap meet. You feel me? And uh, we heard NWA and we was like, these boys going crazy. And they were spitting our language. He was spitting, and this guy was just incredible. Like short, <laughs> I heard him. It was our first big show. Uh, we were still Eazy-E and NWA back then, and so on the show was Too Short, MC Hammer, Eazy-E, NWA, Salt and Pepper, Heavy D, and UTFO. That was on the show. So we came early. We saw Hammer do his thing. They were all in like troop suits. They was dancing. We was like, damn. Yeah, the sweat suit shit. <laughs> so we didn't really, we didn't really see a short sound check, but we saw him and he gave us a tape. He gave us the Born the Mac tape. So I'm like, okay. So on our way to Oakland, we had more shows. So me and Easy, we was the only one up. Everybody else was asleep. We just put the Born the Mac tape in. And we just had a ball listening to that shit all the way up to Oakland. It was on repeat. It was just going back and forth. And we was like, this motherfucker is dopest little young motherfucker out the Bay Area right now. So it was just dope, you know, seeing him as an established artist when we got up there. He already had the he already had the Bay lit. He had Oakland lit already. It was cool. And, uh, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sprinkle I, Me was I the was, first time I, I heard I was heard famous photo. before any records I ever made. I had like a, a different kind of like street fame. So when we started making records, it was already on and popping. But I mean, I was there for the Henry fucking- Henry J. Kaiserson, that was your biggest show when, as a youngster. As a youngster. Before I was I, before in I, the crowd singing. Before I ever made a record anything, I had stand in front of sold out crowds. No record out, whole crowd singing all the words. Tell them all the people who was on that show. It was a big, deal. Was, it was a was, big deal for him to be that on that That was UTF, show. UTFO, Roxanne, Roxanne was the headline. And we was hella happy to be there. Like our folks finna, you know what I'm saying? Excellent. Be out here on a big stage. I got, Final I got about 10 minutes. I, I maxed out them 10. Maxed them to the, it. Came out Killed it. rapping some shit, just street tapes. And the whole fucking crowd is singing every word. I Everywhere. get off stage, niggas backstage just like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> who the fuck are you? How do the fuck they know all the words? I'm like, bro, I don't know. Like, I was in shock like everybody else. Like, I'm like, what? That's what we used to dub cassette but, tapes. I was there from the jump, man. I seen. I was there from the start. I remember the, uh, the entire evolution of of L.A. rap, and when them niggas showed up on them album covers, uh, the N.W.A. with the Gangsta Gangsta and the Dope Man Dope Man, and they fucking uh, Easy did the Easy Does It album and the motherfucking uh, Boys in the Hood song, which I later find out Q wrote every word to. Shout out to Toddy T Mix Master Spade. Nice I remember the show he boy. talking about. I remember seeing you in Phoenix when you was in school. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying it was like, it was just a connection there. And if you if you look at all the visuals, the pictures of NWA as as they led up to the Straight Outta Compton album, it was just like some shit. You was just like, like you you was fucking with the songs as much as you was fucking with the image that they gave you on the artwork. You like, I fuck with these guys. Kind of like Eric B and Rakim for a second. You look at the back like, I fuck with these dudes. You know, but 40. 40 don't like me to tell the truth, but shit. <laughs> me and 40 got street connections that I I was never that guy who uh I, I was a rapper right out the gate, but 40 had to transition from, you know, the block to the to the rap shit. And Vallejo in Oakland is probably like a 30-minute drive. Faster if you drive faster. Get there sooner if you drive <laughs> yeah, faster. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> My guys from Oakland and him and his guys from Vallejo, they did business together on 
street shit before we got in the rap game. So back then, you know, you know, I mean, Ice Cube, man, we never gonna say, hey man, let's do a song together. That shit didn't exist in rap crews back in the day. Like, hey, who make your beats? Tell them to make a beat for me. Like you just, you like you're on your own. Like you on your island, we on our island. When I see you, I see we do a show, we can smoke, whatever, but we're never gonna talk about working together or nothing. So somehow me and Earl just, I used to be hanging out. I used to be in Vallejo. We used to be in the same place and just kind of like, I just I just knew for it. We never talked about rap, yeah. but we used to be around and shit. And I don't know, just, I could tell you a million stories about how it came to us rapping together, but I remember, uh, Da -da, dun, dun, dun. Mr. Flamboyant. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. I made that beat. You know, I made the beat. Like, actually produced it. Oh. Yeah. Do, 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 sh, do, do. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> that's yes. that's, that's y'all oh. sampling, though. That ain't you saying that. Nah, that's uh, actually that's Chuck I, D. Saying, I always get mad at 40. Yes, the rhythm. The rhythm. Go listen to 40 got this yeah. record, Mr. Flamboyant. On that record, he kept going, motherfucker, to the beat. I was like, why you don't say that shit more, nigga? I know. Hey. Say the motherfucker, man. Bring the motherfucker back. That's a that song. Motherfucker. I was on a whole nother planet with that song. <laughs> yeah, I was on the whole you know, you know, my shit on that song though. Uh, be legit talking. Oh yeah, on the on the on the on the, on the, on the, on the hook. Yeah, <laughs> hell talking, yeah. Like, be, he be gassing He's popping on the that talking. shit. Hell yeah. I couldn't even repeat it if I wanted to. Do you guys have a favorite verse of each other? No. That's, I hope not. I, I'm I'm too much. I I can't go through catalogs. Fuck. All I that. don't know how to do it. I Fuck know that. I sing it when I hear it. I get when we when we perform, we be singing all our each other shit. When we be up there on stage, oh you know, we just get you know singing what's crazy at the shows, Snoop Dogg. He know everybody's shit. Snoop Dogg know all your lines, so you gotta tell him stop rapping. Cause see, Snoop will, Snoop will say something. He be Snoopy up there, energized like he he be really one hundred percent in there. And so when when it's a part where you know you put the mic out there so the crowd can he still be rapping he a little bit. <laughs> I like hold on, let the crowd hit, say that shit, Snoopy. You feel me? Dog, but he like, be juice. He dog, be, like he be I can't there. help it. Y'all don't understand how much of a fan I am. I can't, yeah, help, he it. can't help it. That's yeah. how we all feel though. I like I. I, I, I have to really like sit the mic down so that I don't participate when they perform it. I just sit it down and walk, walk away from the mic, come back and grab when it's my turn. It's good times on show, when we do our shows, bro. Good times. Who, who is the craziest tour writer? Uh, writer. Guess what? Not really. We all simple. We simple. Guess what? There's no way to answer that question because we don't fuck with each other like that. Yeah. It's like, bruh. Whatever you doing down that hole in that room, I That's give two your fucks. business. Whatever you got on, <laughs> whatever you got on your tour rider is what you got. As long as I got my alcohol, Snoop Dogg be having a motherfucking nightclub down he there. Do. I don't know what the fuck he got a DJ set up and shit. Q, you knock on the door, you can come in, forty. I'm like, we Q, be look like I got all kind of shit going on. They're like this nigga got a pop up restaurant in his, in his fucking dressing room. <laughs> It'd be laid out. <laughs> What's, oh, what's the one restaurant uh, that you guys would recommend? Only one in the Bay and in LA. If somebody asks you, you gotta eat somewhere in your home. Damn. Uh, I would say maybe it's two of them. Maybe Dang Long <laughs> and um, and probably Taste of Soul. Is it Taste of Soul? Touch of Soul? Which is Taste of Soul, right? Yeah, I could I could yeah. tell you a lot of places I love to go to, but I'm just saying if you're really somewhere traveling, bro. And you're having a hard time figuring out, just Google, see if a roof Chris is somewhere around. You can find a roof. <laughs> I mean, we about to read them. You find a roof Chris, then you can eat, man. I, I, but I can tell you about like where to eat at in Oakland. I can tell you where to go. I can just hit me up, I'll tell you where to go, brother. Chef Smelly. Got to shout out Chef Smelly. I'm just saying, it's a lot of places you go and get that food out there, but I'm just saying, man. Oh, but I, as soon as you said, I'm like, damn, who am I going to plug? Yeah, yeah. Like, That's why I was doing Chef Smelly, make sure we plug it. My mama's from New Orleans, so I, I thought it through before I said it. My mama's from New Orleans, Ruth Chris, New Orleans. I can say that. It fits in the family. It's okay. That's I'm not. bullshit. But it's, but it's, it's the truth, though. I mean, it's if you somewhere, I mean, it's the you truth, be, but it's You can be in the most bullshit. random place. You can be in the most Google, random ass place. And Google just, Ruth Chris. If you Red Lobster, food. man. Fuck it. Real Lobster Red Lobster's go crazy. Got, they got biscuits, bro. They got some shit. Both of them got some shit. I, I got. I don't even need to look at the menu when I go to Ruth Chris. I get the crispy motherfucking uh, what's that? The shrimp, crispy shrimp, crispy shrimp, <laughs> and then I get the uh, the uh, the the stuffed stuffed chicken. Stuffed chicken. <laughs> the stuffed chicken go crazy. You understand me? And a lobster tail. <laughs> if you ever go to a restaurant with forty, he's an expert at ordering. You can't. You can't. I, I got this baller belly. <laughs> he could the chef to come out and be like, brother, you know the way you make that? 
Just change that a little. What just it like? Oh yeah, okay, I'm fine. I got you. In real life. <laughs> In real life. I In know. real life. <laughs> oh Have you shit. Always liked just cooking and generally the art of food. Yeah, yeah. Be, you know, uh, being being the oldest of four. You understand me on Magazine Street. Mom's working two and three jobs. You know, especially on the weekends. And uh, you know, I just had to, my, my dad and my mom divorced when I was eight years old, so I had to be the daddy of the family. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was I taught myself how to self-made chef, Chef Earl Stevens, TKA Tycoon, known as the Goon with the Spoon. And uh, I ended up uh, working at a restaurant called the Commonwealth Restaurant in Benicia, and learned how to make escargot and you understand me and chicken gordon blue and London broil and uh, you know saying orange ruffies, uh, pan seared orange ruffy with almonds and lemon butter caper sauce. You ain't never hooked us up with none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the next I'm gonna do the next cooking. I'm like I ain't never heard this shit. Yeah. I, I never heard, heard this, this one day. It's cargo though. It's cargo. <laughs> you can keep that shit. But, uh, hey, if you smell when you smell that butter and and, and all the ingredients in it, you're gonna be like, oh, man, let me taste that shit. Nah, you gonna get you you gonna smoke one no. of them joints and no. you gonna get some of that some some of that dark liquor in you and you gonna say, I man, let me it. taste that shit, man. I doubt it. <laughs> Fuck, let me taste that snail. <laughs> That's what the Scargo is, y'all, just so y'all know. Just in case y'all didn't know. I know. Some people don't know that. I knew this shit. I never had it still. I never had ate a fucking snail. Some people don't be knowing when shit. You cook so you it, did you eat it? You ate it? I ate it. Hell yeah, it was knocking. It was it was, it was, sm it was smacking. I can't say, I can't, as long as I didn't say slapping, I said it was knocking. You fried that shit? Um, no, you don't fry it. No, you don't fry it. You put it in on a certain degrees in the oven, like, you understand me? It should still be slimy. It should, it should go crazy. No, it's, the no, slime, no, it's the slime nothing like away? that. The slime ain't even in there like that. It's like a butter sauce. Like, it's butter. You gotta, you can, you know what? Go to YouTube and you'll be like, this shit might not be that bad. Because, you know, the YouTube will show you how to do anything. I kind of see this shit like chitlins, though, bro. Nah, like, like, nothing like that, bro. Stuff on it There's a little strip. It, it's just a little piece of the, the snail. Just a little, you understand me? Just a little piece. <laughs> And it's in the shell, and in the shell, it's shit, like this buttery, like a buttery. Just a little piece. It's like snot to me. Hey, shit man. Like hey, hey, I'm, I'm going to give it to you straight, not just fake. A little piece. I'm going to give it to you straight, not fake. I don't like, know see, if I eat that shit to this day. You got antennas. Like, it was, you got to like, remember, uh, I was a teenager chicken. making you know, this shit. Snail? Fuck no. Hey, hold, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was a teenager making this shit. When you a teenager, you eating everything. You don't give a fuck. You eating everything, and you understand me, and that's that. Snail. I'm a half a hundred, so I'm, I might be cool on it these days. <laughs> it but even start with an S N like snot, like snail. It ain't nothing like that. It is. Nah, you gotta hang around some rich people to, to know. They'll tell, you, <laughs> they'll tell you how that shit go. Yeah, yeah so I've been around is. rich people and shit. I don't know if you ever have, you know, I was, like I was, not even rich, wealthy. I don't, I don't eat like billionaires and shit. I don't, I don't eat rich. Though. Luga caviar and shit like that. You understand me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me get back to this shit. I'm, I ex, I ex, I'm just fucking with Todd. This, this is what my, we do. We do this shit all the I time. I expand my horizons on food as much as possible, but there's some things <laughs> I just never cross. Oh man, you gotta try it. You gotta try it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's Tubeshore's <laughs> second favorite word? <laughs> Who's your second one? Tube. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Bitch ain't really my favorite word. It's my favorite word when I rap. I'm a, I'm I'm just your average like cool ass nerd. You know what I'm saying, man. I'm like I'm, you would be surprised the shit that I know, and the too short bitch. You know, bitch. That shit is, it's just, it's it's my job for real. <laughs> you, you, you would rarely you would rarely hear me yeah, sit, say the word bitch when I'm not working. Bitch, it's, it's my job. It's my job. <laughs> just, I'm just, just doing my job, bitch. <laughs> just doing my job. Do I say bitch a lot? I really don't. Uh, I really don't. When we, was on that, when we was at the MGM Casino in Detroit one time, and I'm, we finna go in there and gamble, and he had a broad in the car, and he was like, and he just slid off and just, bitch, to us, and slid out on us. I said, this nigga just cussed us out, saying, bitch, for nothing. That was the middle of the night. Middle of the night he night was on one, you know, but uh, when he get that liquor in there, he'll say bitch a few times, trust me. But he won't call a dude a bitch. He won't call it like he don't. He don't be into it like that. I don't call women bitches either. Yeah, he don't. He, he, that's, that's really his his job. Yeah. He's really a nice guy. Really, a, that's why I was really trying nice to say. Guy. He's, no, he he's really a nice guy. My... We all we all are. You understand oh, me? Guys. Yeah. So, so you poke so, the bear. My my favorite <laughs> words help are the bear like it in, bitch, shit. fuck, shit. It ain't it, that ain't me. That's that's when I get on stage, do my job. I, you know, I could be in a grocery store, and the most unlikeliest, respectable looking females like. 
call me a bitch. <laughs> I hear that shit all the time. Wait, call, women come up to you and ask you to call them a bitch. Men too. They walk up and say, hey man. <laughs> men too. No, they be like. <laughs> I swear to God, Damn. nigga, nigga pull up. His, no, nigga pull up right now and say, "Sure, call, call my, call my bitch a bitch." <laughs> and I'm like, "Bitch, I do it for him all the time." I've had quite a few guys say, "I need you. Can you call my girl a bitch for me?" That's the easiest question in the world is to walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, what's too short favorite word?" And if you don't know it, you just out the loop like a hula hoop. You know what I'm saying? You're like, <laughs> like you, you playing, you feel me? You ain't from it. You ain't. Yeah. All right, I got one for Q. I, I know today is a good day, but what is your best day? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, cli <laughs> the cliche hey, questions, hey. man. Payday is my best day ever. Every payday. Yeah, yeah, you know, when 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 I get that text that that check came in, and I'm like, I thought, gonna gonna say, I thought he was going to say Friday day today. That ain't that we get to. Huh? I thought he was going to say Friday. Friday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Friday is my day. <laughs> today is Friday. Do you guys believe in reincarnation? And if so, what were you in a past life? I know what I was. What? A, a bird, because I'm always having dreams of flying. Like, really just jump up and fly. Like As a human form in your dream, though? Yeah, as a human form. That's how I know I, I was a bird. <laughs> Probably a bald eagle or some shit, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Okay. That's gangster. Yeah. You guys, you think? Um, past lives. Shit. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't remember nothing before I was born, so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I was just the truth. Mm. Do you ever have a, a deja vu, like, like something happened before? Like, yeah, yeah, I had that. Yeah. I had that. What do you think that means? I don't know. With like we a glitch. I think we a, a glitch. I think if we use our brain to really figure it out and go and use all of our brain, we'll be able to predict what it what, what our situations is. You know what I'm saying? I think we just only losing a little bit of it. That's a little bit, a little form of deja vu. You well, trying to get you deep know, on us now, bro? You I, I wanted to get deep right at the end and then and then come back. <laughs> Talking about what is the matrix? Is it real? Is I it mean, not? What the fuck? You want to go there? It's it's us catching up. It's us it's us catching up to our own future. Shit, there we, you go. we ain't even talking about this shit amongst each other. That's that's actually I think he bringing I it out of us. It's like a, a checkpoint in your life. Yeah, because I mean, you plan to be here in ten years, right? Yeah. But you don't know exactly what that ten years is going to look like. You just plan to be here, so you may be projecting what that look yeah. like and come across it one day. We've all said, man, I've seen this scene before. You know, you know, nobody ever did that. Everybody yeah, did it that. had to. Even if you it's don't believe in the matrix, it still could be the matrix. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Could I, it could be a hundred matrixes inside another hundred matrix. Who the fuck knows? Look, can I see that real wine right there? Uh, well, speaking of the matrix, I was asking to ask you because, um, then not to go too, too deep, but I read it in an old interview you talking about how the label told you to, you were going to do a, a nasty album. And then you were gonna do an all positive album. No, they asked me to do the nasty album. Yes, right. And yeah. you said you wanted to like so that counteract was, that. That album. was my. They said we think you should just do a really dirty album, like just fucking dirty. Like they were giving examples of what was hot and what was out. And, you know, it was a lot of a lot of death row and a lot of hip hop was no longer censoring itself. And it was just like it was just out there. It was like you know those middle mid late nineties, like it's probably like ninety seven ish. Whatever year that You Nasty album came out. And I said, okay. I said, that's a good idea. I'll do it. But if I do that, because they don't really know, and most people don't know that I formatted quite a few of my albums in a cassette format where side A would all be songs that didn't have any curse words. And then you flip it over and side B was dirty songs. So if you had a CD, it would be like maybe the first six, seven songs would just be cool. And my, my logic was not, I'm doing this innovative thing. Mine was like, this is really explicit rap. And what if like you're a kid and your parents are like, what do you want me to buy you? And you're like, this. And then the parents are like, oh, okay, okay. And then seven songs later, it's like, bitch, suck my yeah. fucking dick. And then, <laughs> or you flip it over, you every time. And, and a lot of people came back to me, they say, yeah, I used to let my grandmama hear side A, but she didn't know it was on side B. So that's why I did that. And it's just like, you know, I don't know, man. Uh, E40's wine got me high. Okay. Last, <laughs> and I really, my last question I'm like, let me ask on, you a couple questions. <laughs> it's on the same. You same believe in the matrix? Yes, me. Are we in the matrix? Or is this shit real? 
I think it's all semi-projection. Like I think the energy that exists is real, but our perception creates what reality is. So we asleep somewhere and we're just a simulation? Like, no, I don't think it's a simulation. I can be semi, it, it is or it ain't. Like is, is it shit real? I, shit I, real, you ain't in no motherfucking mates. Yeah, just I think it's real. On. You could be. If you think about the logic of what it is, you could be. No. Like it's possible, but but the, the craziest thing is- We don't is, fun, like, function no different than computer programs. Like we, you, no. You could be pre-programmed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you, we could, you could be. You could be. You could if you think about the life, you know, technically everybody is pre-programmed. And then that would be in like some way, shape, or form. Then all that reincarnation you no just matrix. got reprogrammed. You just you this just, ain't no matrix. You just got rebooted. <laughs> well, we I I trust me, I would love to go all the way. We get there. headaches trying to figure I, this yeah, shit out, man. Poss Possibility. I, I, I need your guys' reaction uh, to this because this is the most positive thing. Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, the affirmations. <laughs> love it. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. You that know, shit, when you. That shit need to be for adults. That's yeah, that's, that's dope. Even adults need that. Like, no. No, because. Kids don't yeah. need that. Adults need <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but that's that's very positive. And, you know, when you get a certain age, you look back and you got, you know, Snoop got grandchildren and everything, you know what I'm saying? And this is positive energy right there because a lot of kids, they really um, be depressed. You need you to know, remix that for, for the nothing. adult version of the yeah. remix. Yeah. Like a lot of kids are depressed, and that's like I love myself. Shit. I feel happy. You know, all that whatever he was saying was all positive. I like that. Yeah, we need the adult version. I am no longer my traumas. Right, <laughs> and you need an adult <laughs> version for past. sure. Respect to Snoop Doggy Dog, man. He does a lot of stuff. Like he has crushed so many jobs. Hardest working man in the, in the game. The new Snoop with that right there. I I love that shit myself for real. For real, for real. No, at the end of the day. We always got to look at the next generation. You know what I'm saying? I did a, a few kids movies exactly. in the yeah. back in the day. And at the end at the end of the day, like I said, the kids, they are the future. You know what I'm saying? We can't just look past them. You know what I mean? We got to look to them, get them entertainment too. And so you know, I trip off people. They, they want to clown when you do something for kids. Like they hate kids and shit. I like right. kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's really all about trying to do something positive, you know, uh, for them and, and not just always doing the hardcore shit for the grown-ups. Well, thank you guys for everything you've done for all generations. And whether we're in a matrix or not, you clearly have affected this reality. So we oh, yeah. appreciate you guys. You wouldn't feel that you. if you <laughs> <laughs>